I'm a big meditator. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spend a lot. I put a lot of time into that. It's just like the the stillness of it. You know, the world is moving so fast. We gotta grind and do this, do that, and we don't take a lot of time to just be still. I feel like when I take those times to be still, mm-hmm. it translates into different moments where there's a lot of stuff trying to grab at my attention, but I can still be focused on what I'm trying to do. Everything that may be trying to hijack your thoughts from the past or something that you may have to do later in the day or tomorrow. Let that go and just be right here. What's going on, world? It's your boy Darnell Smith. And on this special episode of Players Day Off, I was able to spend some time with Raiders Pro Bowler tight end Darren Waller during his offseason as he walked me through the three different areas of his life that has helped him stay sober over the last four years, which are meditation, music, and tattoos. Our first stop, Venice Beach, as my guy Walter takes me through one of his yoga meditation sessions. Yeah, meditation is a daily practice for me. It translates to the field. Every time I leave the huddle, as I'm walking to the line of scrimmage, it's like, okay, like I got responsibilities. I know what I'm doing. I don't got to worry about what my coach is thinking. I don't got to worry about what people on TV are thinking. I can just come out here and do my job. I'm out here for a reason. I'm good enough to do it. So Here's Carr. Look at a throw for a Waller is all by himself. He'll never score an easier touchdown. So, man, so how'd you get involved really into yoga and meditation in the first place? Um, for me, uh, I got introduced to meditation. I was in rehab. Uh, there's a lot of people in there, you know, that are minds are all over the place right. and traumatized in a bunch of ways, worried about their past and what the future is going to look like. And one of the first things they taught us was how to meditate. Um, they put us on the Headspace app. They took us through guided meditations, just slowly, you know, building our palate for it and just being able to be still for longer periods of time. Because, you know, as people, we like to be on the go. We like to be grinding, we like to be hustling all the time, but we never really take time to be quiet quiet and sit in silence. We learn a lot about ourselves, things we may be running from in our inner world. And meditation allows me to sit there to address it. Good thoughts will come and pass, bad thoughts will come and pass. I don't have to attach myself to either one. And yoga kind of takes that mentality into it as well, where you want to focus on that three to five second breath in and out the whole time. Allow that to keep you grounded, keep you present. And you know, you focus on that breath through some difficult poses, you know, some long stretches that may feel uncomfortable, but you're teaching yourself subconsciously to say, I can hold these tough positions, I can go through tough times, and still remain present. Is it hard for you at times to, to be able to like you know, maintain that balance? Because like I said, you're one of the best players in the league, best tight ends in the league, and when you're balling out the way you are, you ever catch yourself like getting too excited sometimes and having to bring yourself back down? Or do you feel like you kind of got it? Those urges come for sure, but they're not as, Taxi, they're not as loud. Right, right, They're right. kind of like, okay, like, uh, like you had 200 yard game. It's like, okay, like 200 yards. Like, wow, that's crazy. But it's like, okay, like, reel it back in because you know you playing against a team next week. That, that doesn't matter. Like, it's, don't, mean, you, don't mean the thing. <laughs> what are you doing in the present moment, continuing to go forward? So, the moments still happen because I'm a human being. Right. I want people to look at my success and know that I have not been anywhere near perfect along the way. Uh, and I'm still not perfect today, but. You know, these practicing these things, these mindfulness techniques day in and day out has helped me to be able to handle success better and failure better. If you ain't gonna go get it now, you gonna get it when. Before I done spark up the crowd, my feet hit the ground, I'm going with the wind. Should I create my own style? I push it together, it's a motherfucking trend. Push on two buttons and slide, I don't give a fuck about your corner, I've been. I'm face to face with the drama and smoke, ask about me, I ain't pressing sin. It's way too late for you niggas that hate, thought you that I was going broke, guess again and your watch could be broke check again. After we left Venice Beach, I took my guy to North Hollywood to NRG Studios to pull up on my guy, Lil Wayne. My man D. Waller, I don't know if you know Wayne, he made music as well. Yeah, I know. So, okay, all right, you already yeah. are. He dope, too. I don't know if you already yeah, know. know. He's yeah. dope, so. Yeah. Now, I want to talk real quick about your, uh, your show Love for Music, right? Your grandfather. Um, yeah, my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather, right? Famous jazz musician. Touch on that real quick. Just jump in. I'll, I'll let you come leave. Uh, Fats Waller is my great-grandfather on yeah. my dad's side. And we had pictures around the house and everything. 
growing up, but I didn't really know too much deep into it until I had a, a jazz history class in college. And the professor was like bugging out, not because I was who I was, because I was on the football team, but just because he knew that Fast was my great grandfather. He was like, you don't got to do nothing in this class. Just sit <laughs> and pay what? attention to your family history. Like you need to know this, you need to learn this. And it was like sitting in that class, learning about the style that he created. And you know, his music was offset, but the fact that it was offset, it was like, uniquely him Unique, yeah and so from that i took like it don't matter what my sound is like but i'm gonna sound like me and, and it was like i knew i had musical talent in me because i was doing it when i was younger but i kind of stopped because like band like it wasn't cool to be in the band so i kind of abandoned music but then it was like you know i went back to music i was like this is what i'm supposed to be doing it doesn't feel like it's forced it feels like it's just feeling. natural it's a feeling yeah yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, when you in that studio making a song did you get that similar rush that you do when you scoring a touchdown on the field or, or what's that probably even greater yeah, i was about to say the same thing yeah. probably yeah. even greater when you go in the booth you got your own persona you got a vibe about you at least up on the field you know we're like i'm masked but there's a certain energy that i try to portray when i go out there out, out there on the field like, right it's a nobody can guard me mentality it's a you know, nobody can stick with me mentality. And so I feel like you got to carry that everywhere you go. It's a respect of other competitors and what they bring to the table. At the end of the day, if you see yourself inferior to anybody else, you go on about it all wrong. Right. And I see that with the rappers that I listen to and the athletes that I look up to. You take the field and it's like, ain't, no, ain't nobody see it. Just sit tight, I'm on the phone with the green right now. Pick up the bab in my shoulder, lean. Captain, they ain't been through more than me. That cold and that lonely what more than me, oh yeah. I buy the beachy and prawns up at the peak of the dawn. Don't, Don't take a seat on the lawn. Got a clear protocol just to get in range and to speak with the dawn. And last but definitely not least, we pulled up to Compton. Yeah, I said it. Your boy good everywhere. And we made a quick trip to one of the dopest tattoo shops and tattoo artists in the game today. Black Ink Crew superstar, my guy, I am Compton. How has football impacted your life? You know what I mean? Obviously we see where, where you're at now, but just thinking back when you started playing as a, as a youngin, and uh, I guess number one, what influenced you to start playing first of all, but then from there, how has it really impacted your life? I guess when I was a little kid, I was, I became real infatuated with the old NFL films clips of all the, I mean, you're talking about from the 60s on like Gail Sayers and Walter yes. Payton oh, and <laughs> just like all the way through, like I did just something about it. Uh, and when I was four years old, I started playing you know, it was just pure love at that point. And I was just out there, you know, running around playing free. But then, you know, for me, it turned into like a people pleasing tool. It was because I was a little, I was a weird kid. Bro. I was a sensitive kid. I was, you know, just didn't really fit in with people. And it was like, the things that are different about me, it makes it, it, it's wrong. Something's wrong with me. Not like I'm unique, I'm different. Like that's something to be celebrated. So it was like, Football is a way for me to get these people to approve of me for a long time. And that went through college. So it was just all, you know, it became mature after a while. And looking back, it's like, man, it's crazy. It's like the people that I would have killed to have those opportunities. And it's just like have to have that gratitude in that situation. I had none of it. And it was partly because, you know what I'm saying? I became like drug addict and I was just in survival mode from age 15 to 25, 26. But being out of that league for a year, going to rehab, you know, getting my mind right, getting, you know, in touch with my soul and things like that. It made me see football in different perspectives. Like, oh, okay, like I could go out here and play and it's like, nobody got to see me play. Like even in a pandemic year, it's like, ain't nobody in the stands and I'm playing my best just because I love being out there. And those things became a joy, not so much a burden as they were before. And then from then it's just like, you know, as long as you tap into that gratitude every day, football can be that. First of all, do you remember what, like, which one is your very first tattoo? I remember my first tattoo, 2012. It was, uh, I got a scripture on my left chest uh, on a scroll. It was uh, 2 Chronicles 15, 7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up for your work will be rewarded. I think my last name was my first one because my pops was all, always like, man, you a Kirkpatrick, you always made me believe in my last name. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to stand on that. As I was playing ball and um, um, doing my thing and you know, you hearing your name on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kirkpatrick with the kiss. Kirkpatrick goes like, okay. When I really started getting tattoos more, it was a way of like, kind of expressing myself and more so like speaking things into existence. It's therapy too, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's your own therapy, looking in the mirror and stuff like that and you be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? It, it take you there, them places where you did get them tattoos. And you're like, oh yeah, I remember that day. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a new man. I'm better now. And then you add something and now you're a whole new person. It's, it's new chapters. And through those tattoos, there were like reminders of who I could be and like who I was capable of becoming. 
the thing I look forward to most is the pain. It's like very, it keeps me in the present moment almost. Uh, it allows me to just, you know, focus on my breath and just be there and, and just subconsciously say, I'm willing to take the pain for something I want. I'm willing to sit through it, not like fidget or run from it, but just sit there and take it and, you know, just be at ease with it. So tattoos teach me a lot of lessons that are under the surface that a lot of people might miss. Nah, nah, deep. I mean, it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, kind of, you know, tattoos is kind of a, a method for you to, for like just mental wellness, just to kind yeah. of keep your mind clear and just, like you said, you know, while you're getting that tattoo, it's like you have no choice but to be present. Because right. that pain, and I ain't got it, but I can just imagine the type of pain that you're getting. It's like, I ain't got time to think about what's going to happen tomorrow, what happened yesterday, these bills, whatever, whatever the case, you know, is going on. You got to be in that moment. So that's a, yeah. that's a dope perspective. It's a different time I'm on, yeah. It's a different time I'm on, yeah. It's a different time I'm on, yeah. Do it one more time.